So this is how I would learn cybersecurity if I could start over. The purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. Kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. It's been 13 years since I graduated from high school, and just this past year I finally got my foot in the door with a real cybersecurity job. Now the expected and preferred life path after high school is typically by the age of 22, you graduate with your bachelor's, you get a high paying job, you get married, you buy a house, you have kids. Or at least that's what it used to be before inflation. I know you gotta be frustrated. I know. I can taste it. But that's another issue. And well, that's not what happened to me. I graduated high school, I started to work at Target, I played World of Warcraft till four in the morning, and I did that for about a year before I realized that I needed to go to college to get a good job. So I went to a local community college to start a degree in computer science. That's right. I started in coding. So through the process of failing a physics class, taking some time off, having my first kid, trying college all over again, failing linear algebra, taking another year off, having another kid, and finally discovering the cybersecurity program, I had to essentially start my degree over. Then COVID hit my last quarter of college. The job market seemed bleak, so I decided to start a business. That worked out for about a year and a half. I made some money, I bought a house, I had another kid. The business came crashing down, so I had to pull the degree out and find a real job. And I've learned a lot. So what would I do knowing what I know now if I had to start over? Well, one thing for sure that I learned is cybersecurity is not as easy as I thought it was to get into. You have to put in the time and you have to set aside all the things that bring you joy. All right, so what would I do differently? Well, the first thing that I did wrong was not picking a niche at the start. So when I started the cybersecurity degree, obviously by that point, I was all over the place. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my degree because I was in and out of computer science program. But once I started cybersecurity, I should have picked a niche in the field to focus in on. So I thought that knowing the basics that are in the program, Windows command line, Linux commands, networking, common vulnerabilities and exploits, and everything that was taught in my degree, I thought that was gonna be enough that I could graduate and just pick a job from whatever niche that I wanted. I didn't think that I actually needed to hone in my skills throughout the course, and I thought I would just be getting job offers left and right. And at the time, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do networking or become a security analyst. I honestly didn't even know what security analysts did at the time. Maybe I wanted to be a database admin and do some SQL. Maybe I wanted to work with firewalls and be a firewall administrator. And I thought penetration testing sounded like the most fun, just like everybody else who hears about it. Maybe I'd be a pen tester once I graduated. Well, now I know that that's a mid to senior level position and I stood absolutely no chance of getting that out of my degree. I was just living in this fantasy land, playing video games, doing my assignments half-assedly, and honestly wasting all my free time. If I knew now how much more I needed to know and learn to even stand a chance at landing even a job interview, I probably would have done more. I probably would have done hack the box, capture the flag events, and just done more extracurricular activity outside of my classes. It astounds me how naive I was at the time. So unless you pick a very specific career path to go to, then you're just gonna get stuck learning a lot of the basic stuff like I did. And when you finally do pick a path, you're going to realize how much more specific knowledge that you need to devote time and energy into to learn how to get in that position. All right, so I would have picked a niche sooner, but what would I learn and how would I learn it? Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure is that how I learned it was inefficiently at the time. Like bad, very, very, very bad. So this is what I did in college. I went to lectures, I took notes like 10% of the time, Time. I barely used the notes. I honestly don't even know why I took them in the first place. I did the assignments. I didn't remember what I did on those assignments a day later. I crammed for exams the night before and I forgot everything on the exams about a month later. Is that what you guys did? I, I, I'm, I'm not the only one, right? Well, to no one's surprise, I pretty much forgot everything that I learned. I think it's stuck in the back of my mind and will just come to me like a dream when I'm in some immediate danger, like some kind of fight or flight response. But instead of fighting, I spit mad lines of code. So if you want to avoid learning like I did, then I recommend checking out this Coursera course. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, but it'll give you some insight into how humans learn best and how you might be failing to do certain aspects of the learning process that is keeping you from retaining certain information and could help you learn quicker. All right, so I picked a path immediately and not 10 years down the line, and now I can learn like a boss. What do I learn? Well, you're gonna to wanna to start off by learning the minimum amount of information you need 
to start doing hands-on stuff. For example, you can't go to a capture the flag if you don't know what a command line is. But once you learn how to dig into a command line because you watched my upcoming video on Windows command lines that you all need to know, eh? then you can go into a capture the flag event and you can start digging around, see what the event is like and see what others are doing. And it becomes a more hands-on experience that you're gonna retain far more than just sitting in a classroom half paying attention to the professor and you're like half asleep. There's just something different between learning from a book and in the heat of competition. When there's somebody trying to break in and there's somebody trying to defend the castle and reinforce the walls. Humans are not just memory banks to just store information and regurgitate it. We learn how to do things so that we can do those things. So what else would I actually do to learn the things? I'd build some crazy malware, of course, learn the ins and outs, where I could break into, what processes, files, in Windows, Macs, or Linux could be exploited. Because when I got out of college, I didn't actually know how to break into things. We were only taught what tools we could use to break in and how to sell ourselves to a company using models and graphs and the concept of risk and how to sell the risks so you can explain the need for cybersecurity. But along those lines, this is the stuff that I regret learning in my course. And I don't think I should ever have needed to learn this. If I could change the cybersecurity program, I would. But half of college is a money grab anyways. I'm looking at you, humanities. The other half is technical stuff. Discrete math, please get rid of this. We don't need it. We're not coders. Really any math at all. You could just leave that out. Unless I'm taking encryption classes, I don't need to know algorithms. I have yet to see any cybersecurity specialist raise the importance of knowing calculus or statistics. What's the probability of me using this class? 0%. Technical writing. Chat GPT. Done. This class taught me absolutely nothing. All it did was just eat up my time writing pointless essays. And then how is biology, chemistry, and physics going to help me land a job working with computers? Professor's thoughts? Anyone? No one? Yeah, that's what I thought. No one can explain this. Yeah, well, you get the point. There's a lot of stuff that you don't need to know in college, which is a huge downside, but unfortunately something that I had to go through. Oddly enough, I do still recommend getting a bachelor's because our society and the job market is just so thirsty for bachelor's. All of these HR managers are just drooling over degrees when more than half of the stuff taught in the degree doesn't even pertain to the job position. It's like a Ponzi scheme and the government is just paying these companies to require a degree. That's a rabbit hole for another time. So the only way to avoid these pointless classes is to find Find a better degree and a better bachelor's program, or at the very least, find one that doesn't have quite as much crap in it. I would have looked to online courses like WGU or some other institutions, because honestly, a bachelor's is a bachelor's. And if you can bust out these online degrees in two to three years and not be pigeonholed into these four-year degree programs from universities, then that's the obvious way to go. Or certs, honestly. I probably would do certs. I feel like I could get to my current position just cramming for one year worth of certs. College was great for motivating me to get my butt into class and actually learn, but knowing what I know now and how vastly superior certs are, then I'd most definitely choose certs if I had to start over right now. Long are the days of my youthful ignorance, but they're gone now. All right, so I would have picked a path, I would have learned more efficiently, and I would have not learned all the crap that I had to in my degree. Well, in addition to not learning the crap, I now realize that you have to learn more than just the basics. Why do I need to know more than the basics? Because of this thing. We are now quickly approaching either complete, utter annihilation of the human race, or complete automation. So the basic stuff like detecting and remediating threats to the network or endpoints is becoming automated using AI. We have tools at my current job that will detect credential harvesting emails. It checks and scans the website the URL leads to and very accurately determines whether or not it's malicious. And if it is malicious, it pulls the email right out of the mailbox. And the best part is only one out of like 200 are false positives and are benign emails that should have gone into the mailbox. That's a pretty good number. There's also tools that block installations, processes, scripts being ran that it detects are malicious. And if it detects anything malicious at all, then it blocks the process and quarantines the file. And all of this while letting the person in front of the computer know what is happening. So if they're confused why their grayware gambling software is installing, they'll get a message. This is the direction that cybersecurity is headed into, the automation AI revolution. And security analyst work is just getting more complicated. 
Someone in a previous video said, it's pointless. You're gonna get replaced by AI. That would be true if I only knew how to do the basic stuff that AI will soon be able to do more efficiently and effectively than humans. So how do we keep our jobs? These people from the future are taking all the work away. They take our job! Well, we have to keep learning how these tools work so that we can ascend to a higher calling as security analyst engineer. This is where knowledge of software and coding is gonna become more important. It's hard to know how soon the tools that require human interaction to analyze is going to be replaced by AI tools. But what people fail to understand when they say things like, in two years time, your job's gonna be obsolete, is how difficult it is to overhaul security tools across a mid to enterprise level organization. There's so many cogs in the machine that if you bring an AI into the environment without proper testing, then AI can just start running ramping, network quarantining endpoints or a full network if it's not properly tuned. To give you an example, my last job at a managed service provider, there was a company that we provided service to that had over half of their 100 employee environment still running on Windows 7. And that was just this past year where Windows 11 was available. So having every company adopt these AI tools is probably gonna take anywhere from 10 to 20 years if we're lucky. So that gives cybersecurity professionals like you and me time to not only learn the basics, but also learn machine code and automation. Like start learning now if you can. And if you don't know what AI is, Google it. But the gist of it in a dumbed down version of how I understand it is AI is just a long algorithm of code that was set to run on tasks that it was required to do over millions of iterations at a time. The more iterations it runs, the more efficient and better it becomes. Think about how good you would be if you played chess a million times with somebody that was teaching you what you did wrong every game. That's AI, and it can do those games in fractions of a minute, depending on the computing power of the AI, of course. Now bring quantum computing into the mix with AI, and those millions of games can be done in fractions of a second. It's insanity. So yeah, leverage AI to your benefit. Put in some code and ask, how do I buffer overflow this code? It'll tell you in less than a minute. That is if you unlock the Dan feature. And that's it. That's what I would do if I had to start all over. I hope you can learn from my mistakes and learn more than I do at my ripe age. As I approach 40, I can only dream that AI is gonna provide a virtual experience for World of Warcraft where I can live my retirement days as a warrior of Azeroth. Uh, yeah, so I would pick a career path, learn how to learn as efficiently as possible, avoid learning all the crap that you learn in typical 40 year degree, learn the basics and immediately start working on hands-on projects as soon as I can, and making sure to not stop learning after I learn the basics. Because AI is coming, and it's coming for our yeah! <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Please consider liking and subscribing down below. We'll see you in the next video. I'll show you to the coffee room. Oh my God. They took my job! They took your job! <laughs>